find Taste of His goodness Find what you're looking for For God so loved the world Praise the Lord. Come on, just because there's a few doesn't mean you can't praise the Lord. You going to try that again? Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something about church, the way it goes. I was sitting there thinking because my wife was saying, well, it's Thanksgiving. There's not me. Everybody's out traveling. I said, yeah, that's what happens on Thanksgiving. People out travel and they go to family. We understand that. But you know what? I had uh, heard a, a good friend of mine say just the other day, it doesn't take but two to have church. Two. Two. Really, me and the Lord, we can have church here today. I would encourage you to have church. Now, first of all, I want to thank Pastor Deal and and John for filling in for me. They did a wonderful job. Give them a round of applause. Praise the Lord. They knocked the ball out of the park. And so me following up this morning, I go, ah, I don't know if I can do that. But what I will do this morning, I will teach you about Thanksgiving and about being thankful. We got so much to be thankful for, right? We do. 
Now, you know what makes the difference between an average message, a good message, and a really dynamic message? Is application. So I'm going to encourage you today to apply what you hear. Every Sunday we meet, I try to encourage you to apply the Word of God to your life. And my friend, you will be forever changed. And you'll get more excited. Well, I heard Bo a while ago. He was playing them drums. And then all of a sudden we come to a particular chorus. He, the, you notice they, the, it got louder. But in a way, in that song is the excitement of serving God. And boy, I get to serve God today. And the last two weeks, I've been on, you know, we were traveling, and, we, and we're thankful for that. We got to go to Deer Lease. We got to go to vacation and celebrate our anniversary. We had a good time, and I thank the Lord for all of that. But I miss church. Just two Sundays. You go, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute. I had a man tell me one time, he says, I hadn't sold my soul to the church. Look, I don't sell my soul to the church. My soul is the Lord Jesus Christ. He owns it. And so in, in reference to that, and that idea, I come to church because I serve God. I love God. Do you love God today? Well, I hope you get excited about God today because he's something to get excited about, no doubt. Well, anyway, I want to thank those guys for filling in and, and uh, thank you for coming this morning. And you have a I'm going to pray ahead of time. You'll have a wonderful Thanksgiving. I know you'll be going to family and some family will be coming in. And, and it's not about the food. Not about the food. If it's about the food, we'll preach on gluttony the following week. <laughs> not about the food. It's about being thankful for what God has done in your life. We're going to talk about that, how, how even goes all the way back when George Washington decided Thanksgiving Day what it would be about. We'll talk about that in a minute. But anyway, thank you for being here. Praise the Lord. And uh, I don't know what to do, but pray and let's worship the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Check out the bulletin for all the schedules and such and, and uh, announcements being made. And, and we're having a banquet coming up soon here in December. want to get all you folks here out on Sunday night. We'll eat. Well, fellowship. You know what the banquet's about? It's not about necessarily the music. It's not necessarily about the festivity of Christmas time. It's about fellowship with the church and with God. And so we're going to have a good time with that. So praise the Lord. So anyway, thank you. And uh, let me just lead us in a prayer this morning. Get our hearts turned toward home. Listen carefully this morning because God's going to do a work in your heart. I'm convinced of that. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. It's a day you made. Not going to be another one like it. I get to worship you today. I get to celebrate you today. Lord, I get to walk with you today. And Father, I pray that I'll do just that. I pray, Lord, that you'll be satisfied. That, Lord, that you'll see the heart, Father, and you'll realize, Lord, we pray deep within our hearts. God, we love you. We want to celebrate you. We pray that that's what you'll see today. And thank you once again for all that you're doing. Now let us celebrate Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor, I must confess to you that uh, when you said it's not about the food, my mind, my mind went right to the food. <laughs> and you're going to have to take out those ribs on Wednesday and let them thaw out so you can be, I'm sorry, I'm just, it's a confession to, uh, to you. Uh, we have a couple of announcements. You're going to say something about the... Yeah, uh, the Christmas yeah. boxes, we were able to do a total of 58 boxes. And Amen. so that was a blessing. And at least half, if not a little more than half of that, was all put together from donations of stuff that people brought. So, um, and each box is $9 for shipping and handling. And um, so we didn't quite get as much, so the church always puts out the rest of it. So um, next year we'll do this again and we'll just make sure we get our shipping and handling put in the box if you can and the church always will cover what we don't have. So thank God that the church has the ability to do that. Amen. Thank you for all of you who, 
who gave towards that. We appreciate it. Go ahead. And then, of course, last month was uh, Pastor Appreciation Month. And, of course, the end of that month, you know, he's got to go take a trip to go, uh, you know, shoot something. <laughs> and then uh, we wait until after that, but then that was their anniversary. They were gone on, th on their anniversary vacation. But uh, so we're just, we want to present this. Stand up. Stand up. Miss Deborah. You're as much a part of his ministry as he is. I mean, right. he, uh, behind every great pastor is his wife, of course. And uh, we love y'all. We couldn't imagine anybody else as our pastor. And we love y'all. And this is a, our appreciation for what you do for us. And, uh, and just keep doing a good job. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Now we're going to sing about some more blessings, a yeah. blessing of our pastor and his wife, and, uh, but you, we all have blessings to sing about, and uh, we're going to be, actually I'm going to give you a chance to shout those blessings out, okay? We're going to sing, Count Your Many Blessings, okay? The wonderful hymn of praise to our Lord, and we're going to stop after the first verse and chorus, and we're going to give you an opportunity to shout out those blessings. We're going to stop after the second verse and chorus, and we're going to give you another chance. So if you missed it the first time, you got the second time, okay? So start thinking about your blessings and what you're going to sing, uh, what you're going to sing or shout out. All right, here we go. Stand with me. Let's sing to the Lord. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, singing all is lost. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Victory. Victory? What was that? Bo. Bo, you have arrived, brother. <laughs> Someone out here. Grace Fellowship, our church, yes. Someone else. Yay, yay. Good to have you back again today. God bless you. Let's sing the second verse. Here we go. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings. Someone else. Jesus. I'm sorry? Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Amen. Grandchildren. We're still praying for that. <laughs> Not there yet. Go ahead. Jesus. Amen. What was that? Family. Family. Yes. Family. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. Isn't that great? Amen. One more. Your health. Amen. That's wonderful. Let's sing together. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen, amen. 
Hey, one of, one of my many blessings that I can count out this morning is our wonderful pianist back here, Miss Emily. Yeah. She has been such a blessing, such a blessing. Continuing thinking about that, uh, the song that we're about to sing is 10,000 Reasons to Bless the Lord. So let's continue on as we sing. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship your holy sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name, your
with a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor Say, I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son, give thanks with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One, give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. be seated. Thank you, church. I want to ask the ushers to come this morning as we take up this morning's offering. And You know, um, it's a way to show that, first of all, the Lord ha owns everything we have. We're good stewards of what God has given us. And so we give back to him what he desires in our hearts. And, you know, we, we go before the Lord. And we just ask him, Lord, what part of it's yours and how much should I give? And, you know, all of it's his, basically. Amen. But uh, he entrusts us with it. So let's go before the Lord. Let's just ask him in our worship of giving uh, that he'd be pleased here today. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. And, Father, once again, we want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Lord, we can never, ever repay you for the gift of salvation. But, Father, we love you. Amen. And, Father, you own all that we have. It's because of you or what we have. And so, Lord, I just pray I'd be a good steward of it. Lord, you impress on our hearts what we should give. And, Lord, I pray that I'll give it with that attitude that's happy to give to the Lord for what he's done for me. 
So, Lord, thank you once again. And we ask that you take this and use it in the kingdom of God, Lord, reaching people for Christ all over. In Christ's name, amen. Give the Lord a round of applause. Amen. Let me begin saying, you know, as a, as a pastor of a church, of this church for many, many years, we started in 1991. We're, we're, we're approaching our 31st year. And uh, God's been good. God has um, gotten me through. And, you know, as a pastor, you give the message that God certainly wants to give. And so you pray through it and you ask him, Lord, what do you want to give? This is so critical that you'd have me to speak. And so I may be cutting in and out a little bit, but don't pay no attention to that. Listen carefully. So sometimes pastors go before the Lord and they pray and they ask the Lord, Lord, where do you want to go? What do you want to teach your church? And, and uh, while we were on our vacation, my wife asked me, says, what are you going to be preaching on? I said, I don't know. I said, I'm just enjoying this vacation right now. But you know, uh, and, and the idea of that is that the God is always speaking to us. And, you know, he's fellowshipping with us. And when you're a pastor, it's not that he's any higher up than you are. He has a fellowship with the Lord himself that he must uh, tend to. And so I just enjoyed having a few weeks that I could sit back and let my uh, mind just focus on loving Jesus. And sometimes that's exactly what we need to do. And I want to say this. I want to say that um, when I listened to Pastor Dilly filled in for me that first week I was gone, I was so encouraged. And, and then um, I was coming back in Tennessee and I was listening to John on the radio via Facebook and, and uh, so encouraged. Both of them guys preaching their hearts out really in Romans chapter, talking about Romans chapter 1, about the end days and, and about we need to get our lives ready, right? So I was so encouraged because many times a pastor can't just step away from the pulpit and leave it to anybody. So he, uh, I, was, uh, I was well pleased. I was really blessed to have been that loved the Lord and fellowship with the Lord that served the, the uh, pulpit right. And so I'm blessed. Thank you, Pastor Dill, and thank you, John, for filling in. So, um, first of the week, <clears throat> you know, you may think pastors have it all together. Well, we don't. If we did, we'd be perfect. And we're not never completely perfect till we get in the sight of Christ. However, I was praying through what I was going to do, and then I got a text from Lance that says, hey, are we talking about Thanksgiving this week? And that's usually the given, you know. Sure, we're talking about Thanksgiving. So this message was spurred by Lance texting me. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I, need, I need divine inspiration sometimes. And um, 
But I got to thinking about it. It is Thanksgiving, and it's a good timely message. And, and you know what? Uh, the Lord had put it in my heart in the week of our uh, celebrating our, our anniversary. He had put in parts of this message in my heart, so it's very easy to write. And I'm so thankful for that. So, here goes. Thanksgiving. Lord willing, if he don't return, we'll have Thanksgiving this coming Thursday, most of us. You'll sit around the table. Your focus will be on the food when it should be somewhere else. Most of the time, I know how Thanksgiving works. We all get all the food and laid out, and we just can't wait till the bell rings. And I, and I, we go and we pray at 12 o'clock. We can't wait for that moment so we can get into that food. But what am I thankful for? It's a day of thanks that's been set aside. Thanksgiving Day was a national holiday in the United States. It started way back in 1621. It was among the Plymouth colonists and among the uh, uh, local uh, Indian tribe there in that area. They celebrate a feast together, called it Thanksgiving. Basically, they were giving thanks for what God had done. Now, when I say that, and I add that last line on there, George Washington said this about Thanksgiving Day. Now, I love these words. I run across this, and I, I think, how far as a nation have we drifted away from this? Whereas, it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of, of the Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humble to implore His protection and favor. Whereas both the houses of Congress have, by their joint committee, requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer, to be observed, and by acknowledging with grateful hearts, you wonder where that song come from, with grateful hearts that many in favor, uh, uh, signaled favors of the Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity, peacefully, to establish the form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, this is the part I really like. Now, therefore, I do recommend next to be devoted by the people of the United States as a service of that great and glorious being, he's talking about Jesus here, who is the benefit, the author of all good that was, that is, and that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his care, his protection of the people of this country. That's good. I happened to go to Brook Hill School the other day because it was Grandparents' Day. And uh, so during Grandparents' Day, you get to watch the uh, different levels of grades. They, they come up and they share a song with you, and then they get down to the kindergarten, the early guy, the, the young guys and gals. And they don't necessarily <clears throat> sing as much as they make a comment, and this is their comment. They're asked, what I love about my grandparents. I love my grandparents because. And I listen to those kindergartners say, I love my grandparents because they love me. I listen to them say, because they gave me candy, because they, they uh, kiss on me. They hug me. I listen to all these different descriptions of why a, a kindergartner loves their grandparent. And I got to thinking about that. I got to thinking about that phrase, I love my grandparents because. And that was part of what produced this message this morning. I love my God because of what he's done for me. And so, I want to share this with you. It's in, it's in Titus, so turn your Bible over to Titus chapter 
2 and verse 3, this message is more for me than anybody in this room. Because Paul is encouraging Titus and as a young minister and starting getting a church started. And this is what he says. I'm going to be reading from different parts of chapter 2 and chapter 3 there. But chapter 2 starting with verse 11. If you've got a study Bible, you'll see the, maybe the heading say, Trained by Saving Grace. Boy, aren't we all trained by saving grace. For the grace of God <clears throat> that brings salvation has appointed to all men, I'm in verse 11, teaching us <clears throat> that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking, looking, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That ought to get you excited. Who gave himself for us that, we might, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you. Remind them to be subject to the rulers and the authorities. Oh, I don't like that part so much. To obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak, uh, to speak evil to no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing and the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these kinds and these things I want you to affirm constantly that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. Ooh, that's good stuff. Jesus is coming. That alone ought to get you all encouraged. So I'm thankful for this loving God that I have. And he is a loving God. You read those verses you were reminded over in Ephesians. So by, by God's great mercy and God's great love, he saved you. I am thankful for God's love. He saved me when I didn't deserve to be saved. He loved me when I didn't deserve to be loved. As Romans 5, 8, while we were yet sinners, Christ was dying for us. A God who has kept me. I love that about God because he keeps me because I can't keep myself. You realize that's what God does, his Holy Spirit. Boy, you've got something to be excited about today. Jesus, but his Holy Spirit within me, he keeps you. Always say, Lord, keep me on the straight and narrow. You know, I hear, I hear about that parable. Jesus said, broad is the road to destruction. And many go therein. But he said, narrow is the way to eternal life. And few go that way. I'm reminded of that. So I pray, God, keep me on the straight and narrow. I'm thankful for the grace of God as well. Not only his love, but his grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4, I thank my God, this is what Paul says, I thank my God always on your behalf. Talking about the church. 
for the grace of God which is given to you by Jesus Christ. You know, I pray that for you. Because I know you need grace. And if I figure if a God, I'm praying for someone to get grace, then he'll give it back to me. Whatsoever you give, God will give back. I need grace. Now I'm going to share something with you that prompted another part of this message. <clears throat> While we were traveling, I do pray for grace. I pray for divine covering. I pray for protection. I pray for station of angels. I do it all. Right? Right? You're on a public highway. You're not the only driver out there. We live in a world that's full of accidents that happen all the time, folks. And so I pray for grace. I pray for God's divine grace. As we were coming out of Tennessee, going into, I guess, into other parts of Tennessee, on the other side of Nashville, in front of us was a motorhome, the type you drive, motorhome and he swerved <clears throat> and I was following him pretty close and so I backed off because all the years I drove semi trucks you get a swerving truck ahead of you something's wrong so I backed off and he swerved again but this time he swerved so much he swerved into that little metal fence on the, in the median and when he did, and he hit the metal fence that blew his left front tire and sent him at 70 miles an hour across the interstate to the other side. Hit two cars head on. And I pulled over on our side of the interstate and I jumped across the little metal fence there and ran over to this destruction. Inside of that motor home was a man of, at the age of 74, had no one with him, but he was trapped behind the steering wheel. It crushed the steering wheel off, crushed his leg, had his leg caught behind the steering column. And the back of the RV was on fire. And then beside the RV was a pickup truck that he had hit head on, all the front end of it was mashed up and the man was still sitting in it. And beyond my eyesight was a minivan that didn't look as bad as the other two vehicles as far as damage goes. But in it was a lady 54 years old, a young lady 30, and a three-year-old child. And when we began to get on the scene there, I, I still hear these words because they rang out so loud of all the people that pulled over and helped, and I'm going to tell you what, I'm so thankful for human kindness and love that they would pull over. And this is what I heard, get him out, get him out. And the man was kind of dumbfounded somewhat, just had a wreck. He didn't know his whereabouts or what was going on, so we began to try to dig him out of that motor home while it was on fire. And we figured out we would pull the dash out because it was all mangled up anyway, so there was other people that stopped, and we got a fire extinguisher. I'm giving you some details here because you'll need them later on. And we pulled the, the, the dash away from him just long enough we could get him out. And we got him out, and the, and the RV was burning. And then we went around to the man that was in the pickup truck. And he was about 39 years of age, I believe, and his name was Josh. And I asked Josh, I said, uh, I need to get you out. And he says, I can't move. I'm hurting in my hip really bad, and I can't move. I said, Josh. If I don't get you out of this fire, or out of this vehicle, this RV's on fire and you're sitting right next to it, I said, I gotta get you out. So we worked and got him out. A couple of guys come by and we, we drug him to safety. 
basically picked him up and carried him almost to safety. His hip was hurting tremendously. He was leaned up against the guardrail, and then I looked over, and someone said that in the minivan, the lady at 54 years of age lost her life. She was already gone. The young lady and the three-year-old was okay. And I thought about after all that took place and, and we left and, and then the Lord brought it back up in my mind and I got to tell you this. I got to tell you, there's, we live in a world full of accidents and when they happen, uh, there's good people out there that will stop and help and I'm thankful for them. But the Lord kind of em embedded in my heart the realization of life itself. Though we couldn't help the one lady, we couldn't save her. I'll put it that way. We couldn't save her. We could save the others. And so when I, I read you that verse a while ago that, but by God, his great love, his, he's rich in mercy because of his great love in which he loved us, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were car wrecked in life. The vehicle we were in at the time in our spiritual life was on fire. The flames of hell were licking at our feet. But someone got us out. And it was God. I am so thankful that God seen the accident of life that I was in, my sin and my shortcomings, all were punishing me to an everlasting fire. And God got me out. Now I'm going to tell you what. There's some that God's message is to everyone. We're going to read a verse here in a minute. It says God's grace appears to all men. We read it there in that verse. It appears to all men. Not all men receive it. I thought about, what about if Josh wouldn't let me get him out of the truck? He would have burned to death. Or what about the old man wouldn't let us get him out of the car, the RV, he'd have burned to death. That's the realities of it. But when we told them the circumstances in their life, when we said to them, look, if we don't get you out of here, you're going to burn to death. Do you know what they did? They said, get me out of here. And sometimes in the spiritual world, folks, that's exactly what we need to be talking to others about. I need to inform you on something. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, do you know where you're going to end up? Do you know that you're wrecked right now, your life is, and it's, there's flames around you. Do you know that? But what do we do? We're passive. We don't want to get involved in people's lives. Now this is, it's a, wait a minute. How do we get from Thanksgiving all the way over to here? <laughs> I don't know. Ask the Lord. But I got to tell you one thing. It's, it's just by God's grace. It's by God's grace I wasn't on the other side of the interstate going down the oncoming traffic. Do you realize how fragile life is? And what do we do sometimes in our world? We get so involved in our own world, we don't want to, well, that's somebody else to take care of that. While in this word picture, though it was a tragedy, all these cars are driving by, zoom, 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 they're going somewhere, they got to get to where they're going. In life, in death is taking place right in front of us. So I want to be an encourager today. I'm thankful for the grace of God. 
I'm thankful that when I go out there and I get in that car, sure, I'm going to pray all them prayers I can pray. And if I can find another one, I'll add it on to the list. But it's by God's grace, my friend. So I'm thankful for God's grace. I want to share that with you because I want to tell you this weekend or this week, God may put you in front of someone that's in a wreck and spiritually in a wreck. And he wants you to get them out. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 5, which in all ages he has come and made known to the sons of men God. I was sitting in that Baptist church. I wasn't bothering nobody. I went because someone asked me to go. I was convicted by God's Spirit. First Sunday, I don't know why I went back the second Sunday, it was God. I went back the second Sunday, got convicted again. And for such a thing about pushing away the Holy Spirit, I did it two Sundays in a row. But on that third Sunday when I got to church and I sat down, the Holy Spirit started messing with me right away. And I use that word messing with me because you know what I mean when I say messing with me. He messed with me in such a way that he brought his glorious love and compassion. And love for me, and right there, he said, Robert, you can get out of these flames. You can walk to me, come to me, and receive eternal life. Thankful for the Holy Spirit. He didn't give up on me. He kept dragging me, kept prompting me. And I'll tell you what, today, he's the one that, that some ways he'll, he'll do it to me again today. He tells me what to preach to you all. If I preach my words, they do you no good. I preach God's word. He tells me what to preach to you. He opens the word to my understanding. He reveals himself constantly, folks, in my life, and I pray that he does in yours as well. I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful for my home in heaven. I don't see it yet, but it's coming. In Revelation chapter 11, verse 12, and I chose this verse because I want to focus on three little words in it. There was a great voice out of heaven talking about this as in the seven, day, seven years of tribulation when Moses and Elijah are his witnesses. And you know, they killed him, and God resurrected him. He said, come up hither. I like that. I like that. One day, folks, when Jesus returns, we're coming up hither and fast. And I can't wait. And I see this, I see the description. The Bible teaches me about the clouds rolling back about our Lord coming for us, that trumpet sounding, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and those that are alive and remain are on their way. And they meet him in the air. And then I'm, I'm like Abraham. I have that heart like Abraham. Remember, remember in Hebrews chapter 11? <clears throat> Abraham lived by faith. He was looking for a city. It wasn't a city built by men. It was a city built by God. I look forward to that city. I'm like Abraham. I'm with him on that one. I'm looking forward to the beauties of God that he has in store for me. In Psalms 114, 144.15, happy is that people. Happy is that people that is in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Well, to be the most happiest people on the earth. I mean, Christians go around sometimes, oh, pitiful me. Well, to be the happiest people on the earth. And other people ought to see that. Where do you get all that happiness? Now, why are you so, you know, you're, you're almost kind of, you know, you're too heavily minded to be earthly good. Where do you get all that from? You get it from God. Love Him. By the way, you can't be too heavenly minded 
If you are, when you get heavenly minded, you are earthly good. So I'm thankful for heaven. Now I'm going I'm to get in an area here and you're going to say amen or oh me now. I'm thankful for my church. You know what? I'm thankful for my church. You folks, y'all gather together every Sunday to listen to somebody like me. And I think, you know, Lord, they're, they're glutton for punishment. But in Acts, it talks about the church getting together. It talks about the church when they get together and God gets within the church. Which, as I said this morning, there's two of us here today going to have church, me and God. I hope the rest of you will join in. But if we're having church together, folks, we're praising God together and worshiping the Lord together. It says that he fi will find favor in God's eye. And that he will add to the church those which are being saved. Uh-oh, that was the verse that was tied back to what I was telling you before. Get me out. So, I'm thankful for my church. You guys don't know how much you, you, you are on my mind. You just don't know. I pray for you often. I pray that I can be strong in the Lord. I pray that I can have wisdom of God that I give you on, on every Sunday morning or Wednesday night or whenever we meet. I pray that God would make you spiritual giants. I don't care if the church is completely full. I want you full of the Spirit. And I want you walking with the Lord and fellowshipping with Him. I want you to be different. I don't want you to look like the world. I want you to be different because you're God's people. So I pray for you, and I know you pray for me, and thank you. And thank you for all the gifts that you give me. Thank you for the pastor's appreciation month. We ought to have a church member appreciation month. But I appreciate you and thank you. I'm thankful for my family. God's only gave me one. And it's a wonderful family. You heard my story when I started, when I first knew, first started my relationship with the Lord. I looked at my family and I started praying for my family and all of our families, not because of me, it's because of the grace of God. The revival fire swept through our family and everyone started getting saved. They just couldn't help it. They seen the difference. They seen what God can do. They seen what God has done for them. And they got saved. And I'm thankful for my friends as the Bible says. And Jesus called me a friend. He calls you a friend if you keep his commands. He said, you are my friends if you do, so whatever I command you. Thankful for my friends. Now I'm going to close with this acrostic or acronym. I've read this and I thought this is wonderful. Because you're going to have an opportunity. This is Thanksgiving week. You show up to just eat. You'll be thinking about this, and well, I need to be thanks for this. The T stands for today. There's no day like today that will you should you should start thanking God today. You don't have to wait till Wednesday. I mean Thursday. You thank God today. How many of you on a daily basis thank God? You don't thank God all the time. This is the day of the Lord. He made it. Let us rejoice and be glad therein. That's thanks is what that is. That's thanksgiving. We should, the T could stand for transgressions that are forgiven, folks. It could stand for the trials that we face. I'm going to read you a scripture that no Christian likes to hear. But it's in the Bible. It's there. It's in James chapter 1, verse 2. Listen carefully to this. Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Oh, you, you think when it starts off like that, it's got to be all good stuff after that, right? Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whatever you face, trials of many kinds, because you know that 
the testing of your faith develops perseverance, and perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Next time you're going through a trial, you find it hard to praise God in it. Thank God for it. But I want to tell you what, he does a great work in our trials. So the T stands for today, I'll leave it there, and the H stands for health. You say, well, hey, we're all in good health around here. I'm talking about your spiritual health. But I'm also talking about your physical health. You know, I think about this sometimes when I'm drinking too much coffee. And I think, now wait a minute, you know, everything needs to be done, you know, because this is God. God gave me this body. It's, it's, it's wonderfully and fearfully made by the hands of God. And he gave me this body and he told me to take care of it. And I think about these sort of things when I'm putting in about the third or fourth cup of coffee. Robert, slow down. But think about my health. Think about your spiritual health as well. The A. This is a good one. Stands for an awesome God. We don't serve any God. We serve the awesome God. Come on, folks. Our God's an awesome God who reigns from heaven above. How's the song go? With wisdom, with power, and with love. Our God's an awesome God. Now the end is the hard one. I need to thank God for my nation. You go, wait a minute, it's a mess. Who would ever thank God for our nation? Well, I'm going to thank God for our nation. I know we might have some. I'll just leave it there. I'll let you do your own description of that. But let me tell you what. We have a nation. And look. The way we started, we started as a godly nation. And we have some good people. We have some, some God's people, no doubt, in, the, in our nation today. And we have a good nation. We just need to pray for it more. It's a mess. So what do you do when it's a mess? What do you parents do when your kids are a mess? You pray for them. What about if they get messier? You pray more for them. What about they really get messy? You pray a lot for them. So why don't we pray a lot for our country when we see what happens? But I'm thankful for it. And the K stands for kindness. I was never so glad that day seeing the kindness of other people. Now, I don't know how many of them were Christians. I didn't have time to ask. You know, in that situation, you're just kind of, it's, it's kind of a blitz. And you just run in there and you do what you can to get people out of harm's way. And then usually, you know, later on you, you find out some information. You don't get all information. But what I do tell you is this. A bunch of people pulled over, got out of their cars, and ran to help those people. And I'm so thankful for the kindness of people. And Christians, we ought to be the example. We ought not never lack behind. We ought to be the example. And then the last one, and you figured it. You already got it in your head. Salvation. When I got saved, I heard this verse. And I thought, ooh. I'll explain myself. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Nevertheless, do not rejoice that the spirits are subject to you. I read that part and I go, you mean I can cast out devils? I can do all this other stuff? I can, you know, blow them over through the Spirit of God, basically? But this is what Jesus was saying. Listen carefully. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice that your names are written in heaven Praise the Lord. Amen. Is your name written in heaven? Amen. That's a direct question to you today. Is your name written in heaven? The way you get it there is by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. 
That's the way you get it there. And you know who keeps it there? Jesus. Nobody will come by and, <clears throat> you know, you don't have to worry about somebody coming by and, and blotting out your name. Jesus is the one that holds it. Jesus is the one that's got it. Look, I told you starting off, if Jesus can't keep me, I can't be kept if he doesn't keep me. It's the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you what we can do to the Holy Spirit. We can, we can run from the Holy Spirit. We can resist the Holy Spirit. We shouldn't do that. We should submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit. But my friend, when Jesus said to me, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord, now he's talking about with that, with that remorseful heart. You read Romans chapter 10, you'll find out that it's talking about a remorseful heart. That God talks about forgiveness of sin, believe that Jesus died and was buried for three days and rose again, shall have everlasting life. Jesus said it. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Who's doing the saving? Jesus. Father, those that you gave me, he says, I have not lost one but the son of perdition. But he says, he holds them in his hand. Nothing can separate you from the love of God, nor height, nor death, nor this, nor that, nor sword, nor peril. I forgot the scripture, but it comes down and says, nothing can separate you. The rulers of darkness or anything of the such cannot separate you from God. So I've got plenty to be thankful about today. I'll be the happiest guy. I am the happiest guy on the planet right now. Now I say that because, you know, I'm so thankful for God's love and God's grace. God's protection. And I don't know when my day's coming. God knows that. That's not mine to know. I hope we go up in the rapture of the church. But if God chooses to come for me tomorrow, if he chose to do that, if that's his will, I want you to know something. My name is written in heaven. I will be there. If you ever come to my memorial, some of you, uh, you may be, whoopee. No. <laughs> I'm saying that in a fun way. But I want you to know something. You better have a celebration. Because I am kicking up my heels in heaven. I am walking the streets of gold. I am in God's presence. Be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. I'm in his presence. We're having a good time. So be assured, I'm going to heaven. How about you? Amen. Father, I pray for everyone here. Lord Jesus, this is the most important question anyone could ever get asked. Do they know you as Lord and Savior? And I pray today, Lord, if there's anyone here that maybe, maybe, you know, Lord, they've, they've been in church all their life. Maybe, and they've heard all these messages, but today your spirit is touching their heart. It's tugging on their heart to give their life to you. Then, Lord, I pray, God, they would. I pray, Lord, this will be the day for them. Start their really Thanksgiving day. and be today. Father, as any of us in here as Christians, I know this world can wear us down. I know that we can get uh, discouraged on many accounts. But, Father, let us look today at what we really have. Let us look today of what we got, Lord, awaiting us in heaven. Let us look today at all the blessings that you have have poured out in our lives. Lord, you have truly opened the windows of heaven and poured them out to where we cannot receive them all. Lord, let us look at that and realize what an awesome God that we serve. I can be thankful today. Lord Jesus, I have this heritage, this home in heaven. And I, Lord, I've been forgiven. 
And Lord Jesus, that one day that I'll be with you forevermore. I can't wait. But Lord, I know there's still work down here on earth to be done. Lord, and I know that you've placed us here to do that work. And that work is to serve you, love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and body, and love our neighbor as ourself. And if our neighbor is in a spiritual wreck today, Lord, let us give the words of life. God, you can do that through us. And so, Lord Jesus, I thank you and I praise you. Lord, this is a wonderful church. These are wonderful people in Christ. And, and uh, Lord, I look forward to serving with them for 10,000 years and more. And so, Lord Jesus, thank you once again for all that you're doing. Let us really take hope now of what it means to be thankful and what Thanksgiving could be like, Lord, in the future. So thank you once again in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Church, you're just missing Maranatha tonight at 630. And I uh, hope to see you there. But God bless you.